is Emma someone you would like to see come to Impact Wrestling? This is BQ when I do this for the Impact Wrestling fan. Well, how about instead of focusing on those yahoos, you focus yourself on Eli Drake? What is shaking, boys and girls? This is BQ. This is the Impact Lounge. Next milestone, next big milestone is 3,000 subscribers. So please hit that subscribe button if you have not done so already. So someone said yesterday, BQ, the Impact Lounge is always talking about people who are departing Impact Wrestling and people who could depart Impact Wrestling. How can we never talk about people who could be signing with a company or people you want to see sign? So to answer that question, I prefer to speak about concrete stuff. And sometimes I throw some hypotheticals out there, but if I throw a hypothetical out there, like could James Storm leave? Could EC3 leave? I probably have a reason for doing so. I'm not a big fantasy booker. Of course, I'm gonna do it a little bit here and there and say something I would like to see or something I would have won I would have done different because podcasters do that. But I'm not a huge fantasy booker because I don't like to put unrealistic expectations in people's minds. I used to listen to the WrestleZone podcast a couple years ago, very heavily when I was still watching the other product. And my big knock on them was like, this dude is putting the most ridiculous things in people's minds and they're believing it. And then they get disappointed later when it doesn't happen. So I try not to do that with my channel. But let's do things a little bit different today. Emma, I don't know what her real name is. I know she changed her Twitter handle. Emma, who was released by WWE, is somebody that I'm sure the company is going to do the due, due diligence with. They do with any free agent. You know, I mean, they sat down with Adam Cole, and that was an impossible signing. That was never going to happen. But they're they're going to make the attempt, and most most wrestlers are going to listen and hear what they have to say as well. I have said in the past that I thought TNA struck gold once upon a time with Gail Kim. She decided the other company wasn't for her. She came over, and yes, she went back and came right back and really established this knockouts division and established herself as what I, I think is the best female wrestler ever, personally. You can you can agree or disagree. I think, I think she's the best. I think she's the smoothest and someone who could go at a very high level in, at, at age 40. So um, I do think Emma could be one, and, and I actually throw Laurel Van Ness as a dark horse in that category. But Emma could be someone that um, they, they strike gold with. If they, you know, they bring her over, she agrees to come over, and they say, hey, we're going we're gonna to take you seriously from day one. Just to give you an idea, the last time I had watched a WWE show, um, it was an NXT TakeOver, and it was Emma versus Asuka. I think it was the first match of the evening. Phenomenal match. And then they paired her up with Dana Brooke later, and I thought that was really magical. I think that's the very last thing I've watched from the company at all. But I know I follow enough on social media. You know, a lot of my followers watch the product, and I know what the frustrations were with her and that she didn't get opportunity. And I actually asked Sienna directly if Laurel Van Ness would have an issue with Emma potentially coming to Impact Wrestling. Because if you don't know, Emma was the ex-girlfriend of Zack Ryder. And now Laurel Van Ness is super cupcaked up with Zack Ryder. I mean, if you follow on social media, it, it's like it's like high school. You know, I'm always talking about my girlfriend, my boyfriend. You know what I mean? They're, they're like super cupcaked. Um, and she said, no, she doesn't think she would have an issue. So, you know, there's that. But I think this is one of the people I think that they could really, you know, you know, almost make a promise to from day one, we're going to take you serious from day one. Now there's always the, oh, people come from WWE and they get pushed or, you know, they keep signing former WWE, WWE people. Right now, the company's lacking star power. I really like the, the knockouts division right now, but let's face it. I've said this before. If you disagree with me, that's fine. If you come in the knockouts division as a relative unknown, they have zero idea what to do with you. In the knockouts division right now with the current creative as it, as it stands over the last year or so you have to have some kind of name because they need something to run with other than that no clue so this is one of the few times you're going to hear me say i do kind of hope they do sign people 
from the company and like Jack Swagger is actually believe it or not, believe it or not was my favorite wrestler over there when he was there. Uh, that's another story for another day. Why? But this is one of the few times that I really, they really feel some of the people who get released from there, they really need to go after. This is one. I really think that they do. Now, when she got released from, from the E someone had asked her about impact wrestling in a tweet and she responded with a, a winky face. That doesn't mean they're in contract negotiations. You know, I mean, she was just released. But it's probably something that is on her mind. You know, she does modeling. She's a gorgeous girl. She can continue to model with Impact Wrestling. Or she could try to do it big on the indies because she would, she would find work without a problem. But I've always said if you're a female, the Knockouts Division is the place to be. Angelina Love said it herself. When she was in the developmental system in, in the E, she's like, Did I want to sit there for God knows how long to maybe get, you know, a, a spot one day? Or could I, you know, or do I go to TNA and I can be on pay per view next month? You know, so there's just more opportunity. Yes, there's not as many eyes on the product, but there's growth within, you know, um, with the network, uh, their digital presence, and of course around the world. You know, they really only struggle in the United States, but there's still an opportunity there. And, you know, for women, you know, the women, women, women of honor is a thing. I enjoy watching it. It's not really a real division. I don't believe those women are a sign of the company, but feel free to feel free to prove me wrong if that's incorrect. But, um, I don't believe so. I don't think she fits over there either, but phenomenal wrestler has character, character that she can, that doesn't need, she doesn't need a whole lot to work with. She's not relying on someone tell her, hey, you need to do this and this. She can run with that ball. She could be a tremendous addition. It's an addition I think should happen, needs to happen. Of course, I want to know what you guys think in the comments. Do you guys think Emma, previously of WWE, whatever her real name is, would be a good addition? Or are you strictly against the former WWE people, especially in the knockouts? We talk about the knockouts all the time. They have knockouts they don't know what to do with. And of course they've released a couple, but with what I just said, unless you have a name, the cre current creative does not know what to do with, do what to do with you. But if you come in with a name, you might be onto something. So I want to know what you guys think, if this is a, a signing that you think is even realistic, but if it's one you want to see. So um, this is BQ. Hit that subscribe button and talk to you guys next time.